everyone welcome back to novel nomad and welcome back to another top five wednesday now i absolutely adore the topics for this month because it all focuses around of course on the month of love so it's going to be absolutely wonderful to be talking about all different types of love and share love for what it is which is beautiful so the first topic is favorite male on male couples so, so this isn't just limited to gay it is it expands out to bi trans and pan so jumping straight into my top five i'm definitely going to recommend monty and percy in the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue by mackenzie lee monty himself is bi and percy i believe is gay um, but it is an absolutely beautiful relationship between the two monty is quite wealthy he's the son of a lord and percy is the almost illegitimate child of a neighboring lord and um they've grown up together and monty has always had this big crush and love for percy since he began to realize his sexual awareness um, but he's never been able to quite do something about it not that he has any issues expressing his sexuality monty is a very sexual person but um, he's not able to approach his true feelings for percy I think this is an absolutely wonderful relationship but it's also very authentic because the author herself Mackenzie Lee is bi so it gives a great authenticity to Monty's view and Monty's sexuality. Next I'm going to recommend is A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. This is a historical fiction where a man in the late Edwardian period in England um, who's married, he does everything right by his family, by the expectations of the time, he actually discovers that he is gay and he has a relationship with a man um, but unfortunately the man turns against him and threatens to blackmail him and so he comes out to his wife and family and they shun him and send him off to Canada and it basically follows his life through the Edwardian period which is very dreamy and very um, nostalgic almost going into the harsh grittiness that is the Canadian plains just outside of Winnipeg or I think a bit further out of Winnipeg itself when many of the farms were starting up but even though Harry Kane goes through all this struggle he does have this absolutely wonderful relationship towards the end of the book I won't say with who because he'll give it away too much but um, it is a relationship that has to endure the hardship of rural living and very isolated living so it is a very um, affirming relationship after everything that Harry has struggled through. My next recommendation is actually going to be Lola and the Boy Next Door. Whilst the main characters themselves are not gay, it is a male and female pairing in a relationship. I actually love Lola's dads, Nathan and Andy, because it is such a positive representation of a gay married couple who are raising a child, who are raising a daughter, and it is considered completely normal. There is no animosity. There is no difference from a male and female parents. They are exactly the same in their regard to their daughter. And I think it is absolutely amazing. I really loved their relationship with Lola and also the way that they gave her room to grow and be herself. It was a very, very positive parenting example, but also a wonderful one for a gay couple. Next is one of my absolute favorite reads and it's part of a trilogy. It is a fantasy series YA and it's called the Moorhawk Trilogy by Celine Kiernan. Um, this one is book two, The Crowded Shadows, and in this book you meet Solomon Durr and Aska. They are part of more of a Celtic tribe, what is considered more of a Celtic tribe in this book. And um, they are gay and they're openly gay in a relationship, but it was just wonderful to have that relationship surrounded by a culture and a society which openly accepted that relationship and who they were. So that was absolutely fantastic to see a gay couple not pictured with the backdrop of um, persecution and denial but to see a gay couple openly living together and openly being accepted for who they are I thought it was absolutely beautiful. They were pff, by far one of my favourite couples in this entire series and I absolutely loved Solomon Durr. I think I, I really had a deep connection with him. He was such a beautiful character, very haunted, very troubled. His, um, his trials came not from his sexuality but rather that he was kidnapped and tortured. Um, so it was absolutely wonderful to see this couple existing in such a harmonious society. 
All right, so I know this is Top 5 Wednesday, but I could not, and I, I really truly mean, could not decide between the next two. It was it was too close to call, so I'm gonna mention them here as my number five selection. And the first one is going to definitely be An Unsuitable Air by KJ Charles. It is the third in her Sin the City series, and it is set in Victorian England, so obviously very, very strict um, views on gay relationships, but, there's a little bit of an acceptance in an underclass and Mark who's one of the side characters of the first two books he has his own story coming into this one and he becomes very entangled in the heir to a great estate but the heir himself has never realized he was wealthy and has lived with his twin sister um, mainly traveling with a circus. The heir himself actually doesn't identify himself as a gender. He likes to transition between both genders one day feeling more feminine than masculine the next and Mark loves him just for who he is. Um, he still associates with the pronoun him um, but I still think it is an absolutely fantastic representation of loving someone just for who they are and accepting their idea of themselves. So that was, that by itself was a fantastic representation of a pansexual relationship. The other one is going to be a more recent read and that is Santino Hassel's Down by Contact. It is part of his Baron series which is NFL players who are actually gay. Um, most of, I think most of his characters that I've read so far are either bi or they are gay with a bi partner. This one is once again a gay and bi pairing and it is absolutely wonderful to see someone having more of a bi awakening, realising their attraction to another gender but also it was such a uplifting relationship where these two people who were enemies as such and how they managed to come together. So I really love Sentina Hassel. I know it's not common to read romances written by a man but that one is definitely worth checking out. And actually any Santino hassle, I would recommend. All right, thanks for watching another Top 5 Wednesday. If you have any favorite male on male romances or male on male relationships or couples, let me know down below. I think it is wonderful to have such a diverse and great representation of all different types of sexualities and relationship in literature. And I'm always on the quest to increase the diversity in my reading. So any recommendations would be utterly appreciated. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye!